Hey, welcome back to Cool Classics. Today we're going to take a look at the life and career of Ivan Dixon, who played Kinch on Hogan's Heroes, one of my favorite shows. Let's get into it. He was born Ivan Nathaniel Dixon III in Harlem, New York, where his family owned a local grocery store. Now, he was raised in a brownstone at 518 West 150th Street in Harlem. That's the same block as a few other famous people. One of them was Joshua Daniel White, a singer, guitarist, songwriter who recorded under the names Pinewood Tom and Tippy Barton. Another was Ralph Waldo Ellison, a famous novelist and scholar, best known for his novel Invisible Man, which won the National Book Award in 1953. Also, the brothers Gregory and Maurice Hines, who are multi-talented and have done a lot of acting, singing, choreography, even directing. Now, Ivan was able to attend the Lincoln Academy in Gaston County, North Carolina, which is a very prestigious private school, and that's where he graduated. After that, he went on to earn a drama degree from North Carolina Central University. And if you want to earn a drama degree from there, you'll go through the theater troupe now known as the Ivan Dixon Players. This is also where he met and married his wife, Burley Ray Dixon, and the two would never separate. In 1957, Ivan first appeared on Broadway in the play The Cave Dwellers. In 1958, he got to be the stunt double for Sidney Portier in the film The Defiant Ones with Tony Curtis. In 1960, he got to appear in an episode of The Twilight Zone called The Big Tall Wish, and from there, things just started rolling. I'll give you a few of the more prominent TV shows he was on. Have Gun, Will Travel, Laramie, Perry Mason, episode The Case of the Nebulous Nephew, The Outer Limits Twice, episodes The Human Factor and The Inheritors, The Fugitive, The Man from Uncle, the very first episode called The Vulcan Affair. Hey, I know a Vulcan. The Twilight Zone again, then I Spy, and you know what comes next? Hogan's Heroes. He got to play the role of Staff Sergeant James Kinchlow, also known as Kinch. <laughs> now his character got to do some pretty cool stuff. Nowadays they would refer to him as a hacker. He had all the telephones bugged. Every time Clink made a phone call, they were listening in. He could also send and receive Morse code, and he could talk and communicate with London and have them send bomber strikes over and just blow stuff up and cause chaos. You know, I always liked all the gadgets that they had, like the coffee pot radio. I mean, they had a record player down there. They had the telephone. They'd go ahead and call into Klink's office and act like a German general and were coming to town and Klink would run around freaking out, hitting his head on stuff. <laughs> Man, that was a great show. And Ivan played a great Kinchlow. Hey, that kind of rhymes. Now, Ivan played on the show from 1965 to 1970, appearing in 145 episodes, but he did not appear in the final season. Instead, he left to pursue a career in directing. And man, does he have a list of accomplishments. We're going to look at just a few of them that you might recognize. Well, it started with 1971's TV show called Nichols. It was an American Western starring James Garner. He directed four episodes. He directed seven episodes of The Waltons, nine episodes of the Rockford Files. He even threw in a Starsky and Hutch and a McLeod, the Bionic Woman, Wonder Woman, six episodes of The Greatest American Hero. I mean, his list is 13 episodes of Magnum P.I. Dude, I love that show too. His directing career is amazing. The list just goes on and on. And the whole time he was still appearing on television shows and in movies. Now there's a movie called Nothing But a Man in 1964, right before Hogan's Heroes. It was starring Ivan Dixon and Abby Lincoln. So that might be a good one to go back and check him out when he's young and in a lead role. And then if you want to see him just play a part in something funny, um, Car Wash, the movie from 1976. Oh, he's in it. And there's a bunch of people in that one. Now, in the early 90s, he retired from directing and acting and all that, and he moved to the Hawaiian Islands, well, the island of Maui to be exact, and he bought a radio station, K-O-N-I-F-M. He was the owner, operator, program director. I mean, he was doing a lot of stuff there. And think about it, he had it for 10 years after he retired. So did he really retire? I mean, between the directing, acting, and the radio station, all that stuff kind of ties in with his character on Hogan's Heroes because Kinchlow was into all that stuff too, right? Now in 2002, he sold the radio station and moved back to the mainland because he was starting to have some health troubles. 
Sadly, on March 16, 2008, he passed away at the age of 76 due to complications from kidney failure. His wife, Burley, lived 11 more years and passed away in 2019. Wow, what a wonderful life and career. If you don't read the credits and stuff, you might not ever notice that someone moved into directing and you definitely wouldn't know they had a radio station in Maui. So it's good that we have videos like this. We dive deep and we check it out right here on Cool Classics. I have lots more Hogan's Heroes videos. Go ahead and click one of the cards above. Don't be scared to subscribe.